like to first thank my Lord and Savior for allowing me to stand before his people today. And for Pastor Ellis for giving me this opportunity to speak to you today. Also like to thank uh, Pastor Smith, ministers on the roster, deacons, everyone here today to come to hear a word from the Lord. Amen. Indeed, the Lord has a word for us today. Amen. Before I go any further, I'd like to also thank my wife. Yeah. Uh, she saw to it that I did this on uh, Father's Day. So. All right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Nice Father's Day gift. Amen. Amen. And also Tyson, our Amen. grandson, our grandson, our oldest grandson. Uh, it's good to say that uh, he has accepted the Lord. Amen. All right. All right. I won't stand before you long, but there's something that, whether in preaching or teaching, I think we're here for a reason, a purpose. And just so that you know, uh, the title of today's sermon is, Now That I or You we have purpose. And it's coming from 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Very, very familiar verse. So uh, you do not have to stand. Uh, let me just read it. And this is the theme for this morning's text. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, are of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Just keep that in mind. Today is our communion Sunday, and uh, when we look up here, we, we do this in remembrance of Jesus to Christ to show forth his death until he comes. How often you reflect on Jesus dying on the cross is up to you. And it should be more than just the third Sunday. You see, when we accepted Jesus Christ as, and these are the saints, when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we vowed and to him. We purposed to live our life for him. To give him, to live for him, to learn <laughs> of him, and the great commission to go and tell of him for his glory. Amen. Amen. Another scripture that I want you to just keep in the back of your mind is Galatians 2.20. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen? As I was uh, thinking about what the Lord would have me to say to us today. What came to mind was the scripture of uh, Gideon found in Judges. And Gideon was uh, up against the Midianites. And uh, he was going to go fight them. But he wanted <coughs> the Lord to use him. And so he had an army of about 32,000. The Midianites had up to 135,000 soldiers. But see, the Lord is telling us something that 
He told Gideon, he said, now you have 32,000, but uh, we're going to reduce that. Why? Well, as you read scripture, you know, uh, the Lord said that because uh, some of them are afraid mm -hmm. and fearful. Now, they're in there. They're in the Gideon's army, but they're afraid and fearful. So um, I want you to tell them all that who are afraid and fearful to go home. So if Gideon's 32,000, 22,000 left. So then the Lord said, ah, still, too many. The Lord told him, say, I want you to take him down to the brook. There's 10,000 left. And he said, I want them to drink water. And notice the ones that lap like a dog to bow down. And notice the ones that got on one knee and brought the water up to their mouth. He said the ones that lapped like a dog, there was 9,700, 9,700 of them. And he said, for them, tell them to go back. Now that leaves Gideon with 300 soldiers. And the Lord said, okay, those are the ones who have purpose in their heart. You see, the Lord, is, he's raising us up. And at the end, he's going to separate the sheep from the goat. And I always say you can fool some of the people some of the time. You can't fool all the people all the time. But you can never fool God. <laughs> so God will use the 300. And so I said that to say this. If you have now purpose in your heart. You have given your life to Jesus Christ. We have a battle in which we are to fight for him. Have you purposed in your heart today? And this word purpose means to have one's intention or objective. <coughs> what is your objective? Grudgingly means you, you're resentful and annoyed and only doing it probably, probably because you have been told to do it. Not because you want to do it. In the scripture, necessity means being required to and not because you want to. And we use this scripture every day when we give of our offering, our tithe, our money. Have you purposed in your heart today to be a cheerful giver unto the Lord? Have you put forth the effort? Does someone have to make you come to Bible study, Sunday school? Or do you attend because you want to? And you have purpose in your heart to learn more about our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Does someone have to remind you that you, you just splurged $100 on entertainment and eating out and, and you had to think long and hard about putting that $5 bill in the offering plate? <laughs> Does someone have to plead with you to utilize your talent in the Mount Olive Baptist Church ministries? Well, yes. Pastor Ellis, Pastor Smith labored in the word of God to teach us what thus saith the Lord and how we are to use ourselves for the Lord. <coughs> You see, he purchased us. He lives within us to do what he would have us to do. But sometimes we just don't want to do it. How 
can we serve our Lord with our heart, soul, mind, and strength? The pastor keeps urging and encouraging and teaching so that we go from that of grudgingly and resentfully and of necessity to being a cheerful giver. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword, mm -hmm. piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You see, this new year, 2018, has arrived and is well underway, wouldn't you say? We have thought about this year and what we would like to do, what we would like to accomplish, what we would like to establish. We've made specific plans and made plans in general of what we would like to do in the year 2018, whether it has to do with family, friends, work, Changing jobs, vacation, finances, mm -hmm. retirement, school, sports, marriage, graduation, and the list goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. No matter we want better for ourselves and our children, and just maybe a few friends. Mm -hmm. You see, the world has set her sights on improving how we do things and how we live, always trying to make living easier such as improving technology and then flooding the market with new gadgets. One of the newest gadgets that, uh, that's out there, and you've seen it, we even got one for Christmas. Alexa. <laughs> Have you heard of Alexa? You plug it up and it hits the Wi-Fi of wherever you are and Alexa. What is the distance between Mount Olive Baptist Church and 3391 Governor's Crest Court, Alexandria, Virginia? That's about 18 miles. <laughs> Alexa, can you order me a pizza? You know, from Domino's. You know, they, you see these commercials. So they have all these gadgets. And now what we used to see uh, in cartoons, we see it now. There's a guy who now has, they call him Rocket Man. You can buy a rocket suit and uh, put it on your hands and uh, there's Iron Man and then there's Rocket Man. Mm -hmm. Iron Man has two jet packs on each arm and you can hold it down like that and you take off and fly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now he started this back when he was a teenager and now he's up to where he flew across the, down the Hudson and back. And you've seen there's another one, Rocket Man, he flew with the uh, some fighter jets, all these new gadgets, just to make life simple and easier. But you know, even though we make, the world makes it much more simpler or easier as we say, um, you know, and I know my son, he plays games and you can play with other people across the, the way on TV and this sort of thing. And uh, the other night I was, uh, on there and I tried to load some and I couldn't. And so I called and got help. They said, well, the guy, some support, they may have gotten me, but they did uh, erase some things. Cause they're saying, do you know that some people in another foreign land is using your ISP? I said, well, how did that happen? Well, did you give out your number or this, whatever it was? And, and I said, well, no. And so he did it to where that would never happen. So even though they made it simpler, you don't know if you're make, uh, allowing other people to get into your business, Amen. your financial business. Right, right. And this is what hackers do. This is what they love to do. They have purpose in their heart to hack you. <laughs> you can say that we want less inconvenience. We don't want things to interfere with what we are trying to accomplish this year. But like the year before and the years before that, we know that things will not go as we have planned. Amen? Amen. Something will happen 
to spoil our plan, whether we cause it or someone else or something else. And we normally blame Murphy's Law. What can go wrong will go wrong, it seems. I remember that when I worked for the Department of Army, yeah, I'm retired. <laughs> and I was part of the, uh, the DOD site and clearinghouse. And a lot of people don't know what I, uh, what I did. A lot of people say if I did anything. But anyway, uh, I worked on some of the president's projects. And some of the things that I would do, uh, we had to brief uh, the Army leadership, Secretary of the Army, the Assistant Secretary of Defense, couple of congressional staff members, SESs and generals. And this had to do with one of the, where we do missile testing. And it was set up for Monday, early, Monday, about 10 o'clock. And there was my guy from the Army uh, Testing and Evaluation Command, ATEC. Uh, he was going to be there, and a guy from uh, White Sands Missile Range, and he was going to elaborate on the mission and what the effects would be if this uh, power line was built across where we do a lot of our missile testing. Everything's good to go and so Sunday, Sunday morning, I'm thinking, wow, you know, I'm kind of sweating because I'm in the thick of this thing. I'm the Army representative and this sort of thing. We got all these big wigs and senior leadership. And that morning, I get a call from the ATEC guy. He said, Randy, in fact, his wife called and said that he wouldn't be there because he had suffered a heart attack Sunday evening. And he was in the hospital. So I said, okay, well, I got that part, you know. And then the guy from White Sands Missile Range called because I was wondering where he was. Normally he would call me when he was at, uh, at the uh, Metro. He called and said, Randy, I'm sorry. Had some family issues and I missed my plane. I'm not going to make it. Well, it's about 7 o'clock now, 7.30. <laughs> the meeting comes over at 10. <laughs> so things didn't happen the way they, we had planned. Well, don't want to bore you with the issues. To make a long story short, the guy, he told me, he said, hey, you got this. <laughs> so yeah, and I asked the Lord just to help me. So when time came to do this meeting with all the Sec Army and Under Secretary of Defense, and I did the meeting, and my assistant secretary, my boss's boss, told me that was very well done. And all through it, I just thank the Lord because it could have been a flop. Mm -hmm. Things that we plan, and a lot of times when it comes to where we have no control, we call upon the Lord. Mm -hmm. He heard me, and he answered my cry. This is part of the reason why some of my hair is missing. <laughs> I had a lot of briefings like that. <laughs> yes, indeed, I gave God the glory and continued to thank him because when I look back, it was by the grace of God only that I was able to conduct this meeting. So I have, again, purpose in my heart to give cheerfully. Thank you, Until my Lord. My retirement. This is not about me, but I'm just trying to tell you that what the Lord has done through me. Some of you know the story. It's about 30 minutes long, right? <laughs> I'm not going to give you all the details. But it started, and I was supposed to know by November 15th. I didn't get word until the day of my retirement, December 31st. 24 packets, 23 were disapproved. The Lord showed favor. Amen. I was approved. 
Glory to God. So, I ask myself, why will I not purpose in my heart to give unto my Lord? Many of us are resting more than less on hiding behind the saying that you can't beat God given no matter how hard you try. So therefore you say to yourself, why should I try? Some of us rarely and just barely give at all. Grudgingly, no necessity. If you think that that is going to fly, we're highly mistaken. As Pastor Ellis says, that dog won't hunt. This type of logic or reasoning does not set well with our Lord God. This is one of the reasons why you and I, we need to attend Bible study and Sunday school more often than what we did last year in 2017. Because we can learn something. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is true we can't beat God given because our Father God gave his only begotten son to die on the cross, to die a death that we could not die. Yes, but at the same time, when Jesus walked this earth, he said, greater works you shall do. This same Jesus whom we crucified taught his disciples the word of God, showed himself to be the word of God, and did according to the scriptures, which is the word of God. John 1 says, he said, I am the word. The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And then it says in verse 14 that, that this same word became flesh, was made flesh and dwelt among men. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father. This same Jesus whom we crucified was raised from the dead. He raised the dead, healed the sick, cured leprosy, and made no charges for his service. This same Jesus whom we crucified mended broken hearts of a people tore up from the floor up, comforted the comfortless, caused the blind to see, fed the hungry, brought hope to the hopeless, showed us the way, this same Jesus whom we crucified is with us all the way, is the only way. And if we tell the truth, there is no other way to experience the joy he brings. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. For we know and share with others that no matter how, long, how hard life gets or becomes, we can say that weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. Convenience. We don't want to be inconvenienced. Contrary to popular belief, is doing the will of God for your life, that's convenient. Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one stop. The Bible declares that in him we move. We live and have our being. In him, we have peace with God. We have access by faith into his grace. We rejoice in hope. We're saved from his wrath. We have joy in God. We have received the atonement. God has made it possible. He is the God of the impossible. If you're willing and have made it up in your mind, purpose in your heart, to do what God has commanded you and I to do. God will make a way through Jesus the Christ who is the way for you to do it. We often say in our prayers through song that we magnify the Lord. We glorify the Lord and lift up the name of Jesus. You see the Bible has many commandments but you only need to remember two. The main two. Mm -hmm. You see, back then in the day, the Judaism was a type of religion where they only had the, uh, the five books, or considered the Hebrew Bible, the Torah, contained the five books of the Old Testament, written by Moses. Mm -hmm. 
And, and the Torah contained these five books and also called the Pentateuch. And this also book, Torah, had other additional ceremonial rites in it. And it's called the Talmud or the Oral Word. Now the Talmud is made up of two parts. The Mishnah. It is made up of 613 commandments, do's and don'ts. And then of that, the second part is the Jamar, which comments on the 613 commandments. The comments on the Old Testament, the five books, the law. But Jesus made it more convenient. He said, remember these two. Jesus said, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Mm -hmm. And he said, the second is like unto it. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus come down, he made it more convenient. Mm -hmm. Not to inconvenience us. Mm -hmm. And in Mark 12, 30, it adds, and with all thy strength. Some effort. Because if we have purpose in our heart, we're going after what we set out to do in 2018. Amen. We're putting some effort toward it. Amen. Mm -hmm. My young people, you're in school, whatever grade you are in. You're looking forward to going to the next grade. So you're trying to make some good grades, passing grades, amen? <laughs> you're not trying to flunk out of school. At least I hope not. Deuteronomy 6, 5 says, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Mm -hmm. Some effort. But what does this really mean to you? We say it. Mm -hmm. We are to follow up with action. Put forth effort into this. Our video should match our audio. Amen? Mm -hmm. To magnify the Lord is to manifest, to make him known to others by our word and what we say, what we do. Make him known to others by our actions. Make him known by our thoughts, meditation. And to glorify the Lord is to praise and worship him. Praising the Lord is having an attitude of gratitude of what he has done for you, what he has done for me. Thanking him for what he has done in us, mm -hmm. for us, by us, and through us. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Worshiping the Lord. It says that the God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, worshiping the Lord is giving total reverence unto him for who he is. He is God alone, the Almighty. You see, Jesus paved the way for us to walk in newness of life. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You see, Pastor Ellis labored tirelessly to teach us the word of God with knowledge and understanding. The Lord has given us this beautiful edifice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. And everyone should come again to Bible study, Sunday school, to learn more about Jesus the Christ. Jesus came into this world with the mind to do the Father's will. He said, for I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him, may have everlasting life and I will raise him up at the last day. In this everlasting life he has given us abundant life, joy unspeakable, 
You see, Jesus came to this earth with one stop in mind. This was not a soft stop. This was a hard stop, period. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Jesus did not leave things undone. What he started, he finished. He completed. Saints, now that we have purpose in our hearts to follow Christ, give up your treasure. Cheerfully. Now that you have purpose in your heart, give up your time to Bible study. Sunday school. Psalms 40 and 7 says, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. And I would say that Pastor Ellis is quite knowledgeable Amen. of the scriptures. Amen. The Lord has given him to teach us with knowledge and understanding. I will give you pastors after my own heart that will teach you with knowledge and understanding. Saints, now that you have purpose in your heart, give up your talent to fill the voids, the vacancies in the Mount Olive Baptist Church ministries. I ask you a question as I close. How are we to give? Cheerfully. Cheerfully. Amen. Amen. For our God, Lord God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. God bless you and keep you. First, say amen. Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Truly, He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Now that we have purpose, we thank God that he has reminded us through his man's servant that we all should have purpose, purpose in our hearts, amen? amen? It's not just about our treasure, but it's also about our time and our talent. Amen. If I just may, if you just do me just for a moment, because I think it, it, it highlights what Reverend Dr. Shedd is talking about, about Bible study in Sunday school and the like. That's an opportunity for you and I to learn more of the will of the Word of God and His will, His purpose for our lives. But I, I would not challenge, I would inform you, my now, with that with regards to Bible study, on Wednesday night, Sunday school on Sunday morning, there is a void. On Wednesday noon, we have about 25 or 30 adults. On Wednesday night, we have about the same, 25 or 30 adults. On Wednesday night, there's no young adult class. There's no teenage class. There's no youth class. Because there's no teenagers, youth, or young adults to attend those classes. That's what I personally observe because I go around every Wednesday night and set up just to see. So I'm just saying, there's a void right there. So we need the purpose in our heart to fill that void. Otherwise, it's going to be the 45, 50 and older group, and the gap is 20 to 45. Somewhere in there. I'm just saying in terms of purpose, purpose in our heart. That's a challenge right here. Unless we are okay with the way that it's going right now. So prayerfully, we'll, we'll put that in prayer and we'll purpose in our heart to do something about that. Amen? As the as as deacons pass out the uh, preachers of bread and wine, we know why we're here this morning. We, we, Mount Island, we do this on Thursday, but we could do it every Sunday. We could do